KCR, rocking the campus in New Rochelle. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Political Gridiron, and I am Bill Maloney. Unfortunately, Pat McGuire is not here today. Uh, Pat is sick, and uh, Pat, I, I think Pat is having a cat scan today. But obviously, we do have many political news going on today, with everything going on in uh, the Middle East with ISIS and with the whole stuff going on with the 2016 elections, and also with the uh, Indiana state law. And today, obviously those issues are affecting America greatly, and we're going to be talking about them. Um, first on the issue of ISIS. When we look at the American leadership today, and when we look at what's going on today in America, it's sad to say that we have a weak need, bone jolted leadership in Barack Obama's administration that really has not done the best it could to go secure protection for American citizens. We see an administration that is basically friends of the Islamic State, um, ISIS. We see an administration that has forgotten that uh, that constitutional obligation that the executive branch has to go protect the people. And we also see, um, even in Congress, in the legislative branch, we see uh, liberals saying, oh, you can't say this about this group of people because that violates certain human rights. Well, no, it doesn't. If we see a peoples over in the Middle East or wherever spreading Islamic fundamentalism that's really... Uh, denigrating to society and really harmful to the American people and people globally, then we have every right to go call a spade a spade, I believe. And I I think that when it comes to the issue of um, America's involvement here in, uh, in this whole uh, problem that ISIS has sprung forward in the Middle East and globally, even in Europe and Australia and the United States, where we see people migrating over to the Middle East and Syria and Iran to go support them, we see um, this whole lack of um, understanding the real issue. And even with um, President Obama at the National Prayer, Bre- National Prayer Breakfast last month, Obama, he showed his... Uh, sympathies for the Islamic State and other countries that hate America and uh, the only good that they want to see out of America is American blood and he basically sympathized with them when he said that basically Americans have to get off their high horse because us a Christian nation have a history in our own faith of the Crusades and myself I'm a fan of the Crusades and I believe that from from a religious perspective that um, was for a good cause. And there are many other Catholics that espouse this belief. And I go to the um, I go to the point that I went to a high school, Archbishop Stepanai High School, that celebrated this whole uh, Catholic virtue to the extent that it named its sports teams, the Crusaders, Holy Cross named its sports teams the Crusaders. For so for Barack Obama to go really attack those people, many of which are actually in his Democratic Party, I think that that goes to say a lot about the man. I think it goes to say a lot about um, who's really running our nation and who's really um, ruining our nation. Ultimately, that's what they're doing in Washington D.C. And furthermore. I think that it just displays his sentiments of um, American apologism, if you want to call it that, where back in 2009, Barack Hussein Obama goes over to um, the UN and to other Nordic countries and says, we aren't good. He basically says, yeah, Americans should be apologizing to you guys. And if we have a president of the United States saying that, I think that that is really a tragedy. 
um, because obviously with this whole crux of the issue, the president, uh, President Barack Obama, does not abide to the theory or the idea that has made America great, American exceptionalism, along with the other theory that he uh, does not abide to the American dream or the American work ethic when he says, you didn't build that on your own, the government built that for you. And I think that it just shows this whole stem of, uh, I won't call it naive, uh, being naive on behalf of the liberals, I would just call it the liberals just trying to stand by evil at any chance they can get, and full-heartedly knowing what they're doing, and um, I, I think it's just a tragedy. But when we look at over in the Middle East, I think that what we have to do is we have to have a greater military presence there. And all these people that say, oh, what do you want to get into another war for? Well, you know what? Sometimes you have to get into war. Um, would you have criticized Franklin Delano Roosevelt for getting into war with Japan and Germany and Italy? I don't think so. And the only times that we have lost wars, or that we really have not defeated our enemies to the extent that we should have, are in wars where we have not uh, we have not fought as Americans. I think that we see that in the example over in Vietnam, where you had a military campaign that wasn't full-hearted, that wasn't really intent on uh, winning and defeating the North Vietnamese and uh, others in their proxy were against the Soviet Union. And um, I also think that we see that example in Iraq War where um, President George W. Bush, a very moderate Republican, uh, really didn't do all that he could have over in Iraq. And yes, he might have really uh, helped us capture... Uh, Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden, but there's so much other stuff that President Bush, a member of my Republican Party, could have done. But I, I think that, and, and this is going to tie into the whole discussion later on when we talk about the 2016 presidential race. I think that what we need is a president that is willing to go call a spade a spade president who is willing to go look the Ayatollah and the supreme leaders of Iran in the eye and say, this is America. We don't care what you have to say. We're America. We're going to go defeat you. You have to understand that. And we have to have a president that's going to say, look, you can want a nuclear program as much as you want, but understand, if you want to Travel that course of action. Your people are going to be starving. And you're going to be bombed. And I think that when we look at the legitimate Republican presidential contenders that actually do espouse the conservative beliefs, people such as Bobby Jindal, uh, Rick Santorum to a certain extent, uh, Ben Carson, definitely, and... Uh, Rick Perry, perhaps even uh, even more than all the others mentioned previously, we see that they don't hesitate on using military force to go beat down the enemy. And everyone that wants to go say that, oh, what about the civilian lives or and everything? Or and even you have liberals even criticizing Barack Obama for showing that he might want to go start a campaign in uh, the Middle East of uh, bombing ISIS and uh, the militias over there and uh, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and do, what, do what's necessary to really help people. We see them say, oh yeah, what about all the civilian lives? Well, of course it's a tragedy of any war where civilian lives are lost. But I'll tell you what's even a greater tragedy. And a greater tragedy is knowing that you, the people of the United States of America, the greatest nation on earth and land blessed by God, that you put your your power, your 
your political power you vested into this man, Barack Obama, in the legislative branch of Congress, and they did nothing with it. That old, All they did is that they didn't act on principle, but they acted on polls. And I think that that's a tragedy, especially when it comes home and the, and the rooster comes home and it roosts, and, you know, all this evil has gone unchecked. And then all of a sudden, one day you wake up one Tuesday morning in September and you see the bright blue sky, one jet going to the World Trade Center. Then 15 minutes later, another jet. And while that's really sad, what about all those people, all those people that I know, all those sons and daughters of firefighters, people that work in the World Trade Center, people working nearby, or just people that wanted to go help sift through the crumbles and the ashes and the debris down there in lower Manhattan about all those people that died what about their sons their daughters their wives their husbands everyone else their fathers their girlfriend their boyfriend whoever that never got to say goodbye to them I think that right there that's a tragedy about all those people that they never had a father figure in their life or a mother to really read them bed, a bedtime story or say goodnight to little Jimmy or little Billy. I think that's a tragedy. So when people say, oh yeah, tragedy about these people over in the Middle East. Yeah. But I think that first and foremost, you gotta respect your obligations when you're President of the United States and Barack Obama on every single issue and his Democratic uh, buddies over in Congress and elsewhere throughout the states, they have done nothing except persecute anyone of religious beliefs. And they've done nothing except apologize for America's greatness. Ultimately, um, throwing God out of, out of courts and everything, and ultimately trashing our military... Michelle Obama calling uh, Chris Kyle a uh, caricature. I don't know. To me, Chris Kyle was not a cartoon figure. Chris Kyle was not someone that was just a serial killer. Chris Kyle wasn't a murderer. Chris Kyle wasn't someone who just wanted to kill or had evil running profusely through his veins. Chris Kyle was an American hero. Chris Kyle was someone that, yeah, he might have seen, he, yeah, he might have killed 150 or whatever, how many people. Some of them might have been innocent. But what about all those people here in the states that are living today, and they don't even know that they're living because Chris Kyle pulled that trigger, and that's ultimately what we see in this country: a hesitance. And a refusal. And not even just that. It's more like a disgust. And people that abide to this liberal agenda, they view pulling a trigger wearing the USA flag on your uniform as being stomach churning. I just think that their whole attitude towards that, in my opinion, is stomach churning. And when we look at everything that's happening in this country, we really need an executive branch that appreciates, that really appreciates and understands the value of having a strong military force. And yeah, if you're in California, if you're in New York, you might not understand the uh, sentiments of the American people out in the Midwest or down south, people that for the most part really do make up the American uh, armed forces. But those people out there leaving the farms of Kansas to go to the mines of Kuwait and uh, Syria and Iraq and Iran, those are the people that make sure that the same people criticizing them in the New York Times get to live and get to publish all their spewage. Um, they're, the same, they're the people that are making sure that all these people protesting against them and burning American flags out in California have that right. 
And I think that when we look at this whole issue of, uh, of ISIS, it's really become a tragedy, perhaps a tragedy more so than uh, William Shakespeare could have been right or uh, any of the great Greek writers, Homer or uh, pick your literary artist that you like. And uh, this has become one where people have betrayed their own country. It's basically become an inverted co-opt where no one used force. It's all been rhetoric, and unfortunately the American people have bought into this rhetoric that we're no good anymore. Well, I'm here, and though I'm 18 years old and I'm a college student, I didn't go to college. I'm here to tell the American people, you are great, and Barack Obama, when you look at his actions... They aren't great, and ultimately, they aren't un -Amer They aren't American. They're un-American, and this whole agenda of not really wanting to go use the means that we have, not just using the means, but apologizing for them and saying that we're no good and that we're evil because we fight for things, fight for what we believe in, fight for what is right. I think that right there, that whole message put forward by these people is disgusting. And it's harmful to the American people. And I think that, yeah, Barack Obama might leave office in a little over a year, but it's going to have negative consequences moving forward. The American people, they, uh, they don't have any protection any, anymore if you have a commander in chief just spitting this nonsense and hating on um on the people that he's commanding. It's similar to Bill de Blasio out there in New York City where he's apologizing for the greatness of the New York City Police Department, the greatest police department in the entire world, a police department that's bigger than the majority of military forces throughout the world, and you're apologizing for it. You're apologizing to murderers. And that's what Bill de Blasio did. He apologized to murderers and people that hate America. People that hate what America stands for. And ultimately, when he did that, he said that he hates America. And Barack Obama did the same thing. He did it when he apologized at the UN for how great America was. He did it when he said that the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to go seek his approval. Once again, Barry Obama acting as if he was a tyrant and a monarch. And the American people not saying, hey, that's not what we believe here in this country. We believe in a country by the people for the people. And if you want to go have that whole spewage and that whole nonsense, go to the Middle East. The place that you support against your own people. And go act like a despot there. We didn't say that America is not despotic. And it's high time in this country that we rise up to the occasion. And that we act as American patriots. That the American people become more interested in political affairs. That the American people look people like Barack Obama. Hillary Clinton and John Kerry in the eye and say, Welcome to the United States of America. This is a land where your actions are not tolerated. And don't shut on me. It's time that we espouse the same patriotic principles that made us great again. And the same principle is that if espoused to again will make us even greater. And that's it for this segment. But I think that as we move forward, it's time that we look at our leaders, if they are even that. It's time that we look at the people in influential political offices and that we look at them through a critical lens and that we say, be public stewards. Serve the people that you are elected to serve or get out. That's what we did in the American Revolution to a certain extent when we told King George III if you want to tax us, represent us 
And that's what the French people did over in uh, in France during the French Revolution. And ultimately, I think it's going to come down to the spirit of the American people, as it always does. That these elites and these nobles, their numbers are so minuscule and so small that they don't have any impact, ultimately, on society. All their impact can be washed away in a second by the American people saying, it's time to take back America and stand for the American principles that made us great. And that's all for this segment. God bless you and God bless America.